Jack Master. Jack Master is back. Um, Jack Master did a little interview actually with um uh with what's it with Vice, with Vice magazine, which I thought was fairly interesting and a fairly informative interview. Um, Jack Master's gone through a lot, man. It's been a tough year for the guy. Um, and it seems like he's still struggling with everything that's happened. If you're not familiar, I think last year he was embroiled in a sexual harassment uh, scandal at Love Stays a Day Festival. Supposedly he got too messed up and he essentially went and started grabbing random girls around the spe- around the green room, ended up picking up a couple of girls that worked for Love Saves a Day. Then I think what actually caused the issue wasn't what he'd done, the act, because I think the girls were fairly understanding that he was completely out of his nut. And they forgave him pretty quickly, I think, because he apologized in person and all that stuff. But I think the fallout from it was what was set up, what upset the girls in question because it was assumed that it was some kind of jokey laddie thing when they didn't think it was funny at all. Then the story kind of transpires that I spoke about in another video about him supposedly defecating a kettle and that was what set it off. And loads of really silly things that came out of it that kind of, I would say, uh, didn't treat the issue with his grav- the, the, gravi- the gravitas that it kind of deserved. So I guess with that, that kind of then made Jack Master look bad, I guess, for the people that were not fans of his anyways. It made it seem like he wasn't apologetic, that he was only saying sorry because he was scared of losing his career, which is not a bad thing either. I think if he worked, you know, if if, if you know anything about, if there's, a, if there's one thing we know about scenesters or we know about living in a hipster kind of area is that you're always going to bump into a photographer, a stylist and a DJ, right? Those are three professions for the most part that are oversubscribed that you know that everyone and their friend knows somebody that can fall into those three groups so for you to kind of suddenly emerge from that urethra of those options and kind of do it this professionally it means that you've worked really hard for it so for you to kind of do anything in your power to dumb down a controversy or to make it seem not that much of a big deal so you don't lose your career i'm not sure if it's that bad i'm not sure if it's that bad of a thing you know, you're well living your right to try and save a career that, not, that a lot of people would want and a lot of people would kill for. So I don't really blame him for that. But, you know, as it is, the internet went a bit crazy with it. Um, but he's tried to make amends. He essentially went away from the scene, disappeared for maybe close to a year. I saw him pop up a little bit on people's Instagrams here and there, but he wasn't really posting much on his own social profile, but he was playing random sets here and there, mostly in Ibiza. People didn't really give a crotos, but he wasn't getting announced on flies. He wasn't playing big sets. He wasn't doing... Uh, kind of comeback tour nothing was happening and i thought for the most part the reason why that was was because he went to rehab and i guess it has because he's been to aa he's essentially done a lot of self-discovery and tried to make amends or to kind of get his career back but it still seems like people are um are hesitant to kind of give him a chance but he's made this but um vice decided to kind of sit down with him and kind of speak about what happened and i guess because it's the end of the year he i'm assuming he wants to kind of um make amends again so he can make a big jump for it in the new year because i assume the only reason why his interview is happening because in the background, I'm assuming most of the venues and the booking promoters and stuff are, you know, keeping an arm's distance from him because they don't want to get bombarded on socials or, on, you know, for the most part, you know, on social media for booking this guy. No one wants that kind of backlash. So they're trying to let it kind of di- kind of die down, which I thought it died down already, but I guess it kind of, there's still people holding out. So maybe this is like a public um, show of remorse or regret so that he can hopefully then get his career back but again it just throws up some interesting questions as to how long does a person need to be out of the spotlight to redeem themselves and what is a path to redemption let's say he is sorry let's say he did a bad thing and again it was it wasn't um it wasn't as, it, it, it was bad but it didn't go as far as it probably could have and if it did go as far as that, is there a way back to redemption? Like, what are the degrees of forgiveness? Like, do we end it at just, you know, maybe unwanted touches? Does it go as far as actually trying to do something? Um, what are the very levels of punishment that come into it? And again, who is the judge? Um, if the girls are forgiven him, should we have forgiven him as a scene and just kind of move on from it? Is it up to the promoters to decide is up to the customers to decide if people buy tickets to his events does that mean he's back in everyone's good graces i don't know let's just read a bit of the interview now to get a bit of an idea on what's going on this is an interview from vice the title is it was all my fault jack master breaks his silence we spoke to a scottish dj a year after his public apology for sexual harassing staff while on ghp at love saves the day festival so here's him there um looking quite i don't know gaunt and a little bit you know empty in the eyes i guess it's been a tough time 
sitting down with Vice also isn't the most, I think, advisable thing. They do have a tendency to do a lot of hit jobs on people. But again, I don't think there's any... He probably can't fall any lower than he has now. So he probably just thinks, you know what? It's a Hail Mary. Let me just sit down with these guys and see what they're going to say. Um, and I'm sure, and I'm sure, you know, sitting down with a... It looks like a female, Anna Cordea Rado, and kind of talking about this stuff, what was kind of brutal, opening his kind of wound. So again, he's probably vulnerable, but, you know, what can he do? He's probably trying to save his career. So I have a lot of sympathy in that regard. And again, credit to Vice for actually giving him a platform to kind of speak about it too, because I wouldn't expect it from them. I would expect they would be kind of in the, in the F Jackmaster camp, but that was commendable for them. This interview says the following. Uh, do men who apologize for sexual harassment get their careers back? Jack Master Revel, or Jack Revel, sorry, the Scottish DJ known as Jack Master certainly hopes so. It's the middle of July afternoon and Revel and I are sitting in the basement club of a restaurant near London Fields, a park in Hackney. It's musky and damp and the harsh overhead lights illuminate the space around us. Revel, who's wearing a pristine white button-up shirt and a healthy glow, looks slightly out of place. As we talk, he's visibly anxious. His eyes are wide. He's fiddling with a pen and pens and paper with typed out notes. He's quick to emphasize. He's brought the notes, not because he has a script, but because we're here to talk about it is, is difficult. And he needed to get his thoughts in order before we spoke. The shame and the guilt I feel from this. He starts before trailing off. I find it really hard to even talk about because I'm just so ashamed. Which again is really commendable and really honorable of the dude. I think it goes to show that he's a decent guy. I think we've seen enough... See, we, I think we've seen enough rubbish, shitty apologies from people, especially men, when they're embroiled in these sexual harassment suits to know when we hear somebody that is um, generally remorseful and does have a lot of regret with it. And again, I think in the space of electronic music, in the space of dance music, in the space of underground techno culture, house, wherever it may be, we have seen many of these instances before where somebody has overstepped the mark, overstepped their line, got a bit comfortable and has been, you know, quite been non unremorseful about the whole issue, kind of, you know, chalked it off as just boys being boys and kind of continue doing what they do. And we've seen it and it's disgusting. So to, for Jack Master and his kind of stature to sit there and be really remorseful about it so much so that he doesn't want to say anything wrong he's typed out some notes in order to make sure he clarifies his thoughts um i i think he's i think he's i think he's trying really honestly trying to get his career back and really trying to make it known that he's really really sorry about what happened and i guess the the fallout from it was um you know again was not desirable i think the way it was handled post again was quite hard for probably to do he was probably still high still drunk at the time the way it kind of unfolded wasn't the best thing but i think the fact that the girls involved in it were the ones that forgave him first and that were the ones that were understanding the situation says a lot i think for the most part if they felt as if it was unsincere and it didn't come from a real place i think they would have taken it to the very end and the fact that they were quickly quick to say look we understand it was a one-off thing but don't let it happen again was pretty um commendable for the girls themselves because again there's opportunity there to be a victim to earn some brand new points on social media but again i didn't hear them talk about themselves i didn't even I, I don't even know what the girls names are for the most part so again it goes to show that i think behind the scenes he did the necessary work to kind of make sure the ones that were hurt the most knew that he was sorry for what he did um continues on here uh, da, da, da. this is the first interview Ravel has given since he was accused of sexual assault and love says the day festival in May 2018 bloody hell man it's been more than a year female staff members at a British Bristol festival alleged that after coming off stage Ravel who was high and off the class C drug GSB at the time attempted to grab and kiss them against their will in a statement given to resident advisor one of the victims said Jack's behaviour on the night towards me crossed the boundaries of accessibility regardless of the fact that he's clearly off his head Ravel subsequently issued a statement to the same website in which he admitted his behavior had been abusive and that he had acted lewdly and inappropriately towards numerous members of staff during a drug-induced blackout. Now, the one thing I'll say about this whole thing is that we, we are, we're we we're not going to be naive enough or, you know, um, yeah, naive enough to suggest that Jack Mars is the only guy getting completely off his head while behind a deck DJing, right? We know of many DJs in our local scene, many DJs in the professional circuit who essentially use djing as a basically a mask in order to kind of get high um and get off in different countries with other people with themselves whatever it may be that we know is a thing right it's part and parcel of electronic dance music but i guess the good thing to come out of this really heinous situation is that i feel as if since that situation went down with jack master a lot of the people in the scene guys and girls who are bad, badly behaved who go to dj sets who go to parties that you know 
and get paid high booking fees and then you know turn in absolutely horrendous sets because they're waste of their heads have now kind of fixed up their act i'm not sure if you guys have seen a little trend in here but i've seen a lot of trends especially within jack master's immediate circle of people he used to hang around with or people he used to dj with back to back i'm not going to name any names but i can tell a lot of those guys and girls have fixed up their acts a lot of them are going to sets and because i've I've long, I've long kind of battled with this myself, playing in my my little DJ sets in bars and pubs, around the kind of balance between getting high and getting drunk, and also DJing sober and playing a good set. Because sometimes the, the I think as I've read in the Craig Richards um, interview, the art of DJing on Resident Advisor, he said something really illuminating where he says the idea of getting up on stage or behind a DJ booth and playing music for people that isn't your own is a very unnatural thing, right? It doesn't come natural to you. You feel a bit awkward the first couple of times, right? So this is probably why a lot of us feel kind of cringy when we see these sort of like tech house DJs with their hands in the air, you know, going on as if like, you know, they're creating this music live on the spot where they're just playing other people's music. It feels a bit nonsense. It feels a bit like you're play acting because you know for the most part, you know, anyone could do the job that you're doing. It's not that difficult. Of course, you know, there's very complicated DJs out there, but for the most part, DJing is, you know, it's a fairly easy job to do if you're, you know, if you've got any kind of taste about you um, and you're willing to practice. So once you get up there, it's very unnatural. So that's, so it, that's why it encourages maybe bad behavior, whereas drinking, taking drugs to kind of level you out somewhat. And also the idea of being in a nightclub, I think it's similar to a, a comedian. I've heard comedians say all the time, you know, they might take a shot of whiskey and a beer before they go up on stage. It's fairly unnatural to go to a comedy club, stand on stage and start telling jokes in front of strangers, right? And hoping that they laugh at your jokes. In order to kind of calibrate yourself to the room, you might want to inebriate yourself you might want to take some class a substances class b class c whatever they may be just to kind of level you out and bring you um kind of get you in tune with everyone around you so but obviously th that can be abused that can go too far and i think nowadays i think from my own personal opinion i think dance music electronic music underground music club culture has gotten so big has gone to a stage now where I think the proponents, the kind of people who are in charge of bringing it forward or driving it forward, promoters, label owners, club owners, um, bar owners, DJs, producers, they have to now step up their game. You, you you shouldn't be allowed to get away with what you were getting away with previously, turning up to gigs super smashed. You have to turn up and be a professional, be a class act, deliver a good show and make it worth people's money, especially in the days of people playing paying like warehouse project and print works prices to go see people play i would hate to go warehouse project in manchester pay 35 pounds to go see a group of djs and have half of them completely off their heads on md on coke whatever it may be on ket and then not get a good experience i want to be i want to go to a show and be entertained and then of course after the gig if you want to go and do whatever you want to do after fair enough but i think the idea of going turning up to a set especially on a dj booth wasted isn't the right way to go about things i know for, for, for first i know um Berghain, recently had an issue with um, that Kobolsi, Kobolsi, I haven't even pronounced his name, where he was kind of essentially doing racks of lions behind the DJ booth and being a bit of a lad, and he essentially got banned from playing at the Bergheim because they don't tolerate that behavior because, again, it's a professional place of work, right? It's the apex of the mountain in electronic music. You go there to go and kind of um, show off your talents to the greater world, and people that are going to rave there are also professional ravers, professional club kids. There's a different level of expe expectation, and I think you have to do the same thing when it comes to festivals, when it comes to just regular club nights. You can't go there and act the way that Jack Master did. Now, honestly, think, since the fallout of this whole issue, I honestly think people have fixed up their, their their kind of behavior. And for the most part, I rarely, if ever, see people behind the booth super wasted and acting a fool. For the most part, everyone's sort of raised their game and become a lot more professional and just done the job that they're meant to do, delivered a good show. And then after the fact, if you want to go back to a green room, go to an after party, go back to your hotel room and rail lines on people's bums, more than welcome to. But I honestly think nowadays with the prices people are paying, with the p flights people are taking, you really should, you really do owe the fans and yourself put on a good show. And the only way to do it really, in my experience, is to do it relatively sober. Um, it continues here. Um, ever since Ravel's career has been on high haters, the DJ has focused on making amends. We're here to talk about what happens next. And the GHB thing is a weird one. I only saw people really taking a lot of that in Berlin. It's really big. It seems like in the gay scene. Um, again, not not something that I would be that um, uh, interested in doing. You have to do it in very particular doses, or it can effectively kill you. And I'm not really chasing the high to that extent. But again, I can imagine what it must be like for a touring DJ, flying all over the world, the pressures of performing, 
three flights in one day, going in front of different people, different communities, um, maybe non-receptive crowds. You might need to numb yourself to it a little bit. And again, that's where um, bodies or kind of support groups for mental awareness, mental health, um, drug abuse, drug safety you need to come in and really kind of help these, especially younger ones come in, especially now where they're trying to focus a light on representing more diverse DJs from diverse backgrounds who aren't necessarily had the experience of, you know, DJing to thousands of people in the first place to go from playing to a hundred to a thousand. That must be a bit of a mind fuck. So they must need, there must need to be some kind of support system there to help them through it. Um, anyway, it continues um, a few hours after he's set at the festival reveal tells me he woke up on the floor in a trashed hotel room he'd been sedated and when he came to came to it a friend recounted the event the night before my heart sank and we've all been there man like when someone tells you what you got up to the night before when you have no idea what happened it's like oh that sinking feeling of embarrassment you just can't you just want want the you want the floor to just you know open up and swallow you whole um it's been over a year since that night and reveal can only recall snippets of what happened the last thing he remembers is picking up a female festival worker in what he says intended to be a jokey way and dropping her result her injuring her arm bloody i didn't know that bit as well she fucked up her arm okay that's not cool um when he was told he that he proceeded to grab the woman and try to kiss her and that he then bounced from woman to woman trying to kiss them he says he just didn't believe it one of the first things i did was phoning up one of my women i phoned up one of the women and point black denying it one of the first things i did was in point black denying it he says reveal regrets that now as we talk, despite still not remembering the events firsthand, he describes the staff member's account as fact. The truth of what actually happened, including the parts that he doesn't, that don't paint him in the best light, is something Revelle doesn't want to clear up. That's what the clear up, sorry. In August 2018, three months after the harassment, he posted a vague statement on his Facebook page in which he said he had behaved inappropriately and offensively to staff at the event whilst heavily intoxicated. Again, that was the one I think messed up. I think when you... If you're going to apologize for these kind of things and you are actually remorseful, you do want to make amends. The, what we've learned so far from the crappy apologies is that you have to point blank, even from the YouTubers, you have to point blank, come out, lay out on the table and say, look, I'm completely wrong. I messed up in here, 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 and I'm going to try and do better. You just have to be honest about it. You can't sugarcoat it. You can't try and explain yourself out of it. You can't do that whole thing that people say, oh, if you were offended by it, then I'm sorry kind of thing. The apology, not apology sort of thing. You just have to come out flat out and say, look, this is what I've done wrong list them from one to ten one to twenty however long it may be and say i'm going to try and make amends this won't happen ever again that's all you can hope to do and then you have to wish on the lucky stars that you are not a reprehensible character i think we've seen with, with anita kravitz and her cane roll stuff if you're someone that people don't like they're going to look at any reason just to counsel you anyway so you have to hope that you're not an unliked person if you're not unliked then you should be pretty fine um i think again jack master for the most part I've, I've heard only good things about him from the scene people have always said he's a pretty cool guy so I guess it was just that first apology that made it seem like he was trying to protect his back. That kind of, you know, and again, if you're the girl reading him, reading those vague statements, you're like, no, hold on. You did more than act inappropriately. Do you know what I mean? You tried to get my bum. You tried to kiss me. You dropped me on the floor. I fucked up my arm. You know what I mean? Like you were going around being a nuisance. We had to sedate you. Do you know what I mean? Like I can, I can imagine that being really annoying. Uh... The, 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 the lack of detail sent the internet rumor mill into overdrive and theories circulated online and in industry circles. Obviously, I perpetuated it with my video too, so I'll hold my hands up on that one. There was one rumor that he defecated in a kettle, which I kind of perpetuated. That morphed into a conspiracy theory that it was actually Ravel's team who cooked up the kettle story to deliberately obf 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 obfuscate. Sorry the real nature of what he'd done. Revelle denies all this. He says he's disturbed by the rumours that came out in the days and weeks after the event, but recognises that by not issuing a clear enough statement at the time, he inadvertently found the internet flames. There was a rumour on the internet that I broke a girl's arm out of force. That isn't true. He tells me that hurting women at all, let alone by force, was something that he thought was he was incapable of doing. To hear he did it in a drug-induced haze shocked him into finally addressing his GBH uh, problem. My drug abuse was fine with me personally, which is always the fact, isn't it? I think that's when you know you're an addict and you have to probably seek help when your drug abuse or drug activity starts to impact other people negatively, I guess, in that regard. And you start to do things that you probably wouldn't do if you're sober. Um, I think we've all been that line down that kind of road. I think for the most part, for me with alcohol, I've tended to kind of always given myself at least in a year, three to two to four months of sobriety, whether it's through sober October, whether it's through dry January, just these um, forced occasions where you kind of have to address your kind of indulgence in those kind of things to kind of let yourself know that you're not dependent on it. Because I think that's the path that I don't want to be down. 
you know, Monday to Friday for the most part, I don't drink. And then if we're going a weekend, I might have a couple of drinks. So I'm not dependent on it. I'm not waking up to having to have a glass of whiskey in order to kind of get through my day. And I don't need to have a drink in order to go to a bar to enjoy myself, right? I put myself in enough situations as it is in my life where I know that I've been in bars and clubs and nightclubs completely sober and I had a good time that I'm fairly okay with it. Um, but yeah, so it continues here. But again, something you always have to address and it's really difficult on the nightlife scene, man. Part of the reason why nightlife is so fun is that you get to meet people you don't necessarily would meet, you wouldn't meet in regular everyday life with the kind of you know undercurrent of everyone kind of drinking being a bit loose being a bit more friendly and um, talking to each other and you get this kind of exchange of high low right different collaborations spawn out of it different friendships different relationships just internal you t it kind of rich enriches your life this is probably why a lot of people love to go to those kind of sceny industry after party things in you know during fashion week because you get the ability to kind of interact with different different kind of people within the industry and you get to put names to faces shake some hands you know i, I can see why that's an interesting place to be um da, 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 da. my drug abuse was finding me personally when i was hurting myself um even when i put myself in a coma and selfishly put my brother family and members and close friends through having to watch me nearly die but the moment i hurt other people i hurt these women this is very hard for me to reconcile myself with. By the time uh, the of the harassment, Ravel already knew he did. This is the GHB. He tried to stop a number of times before. For his 30th birthday, Ravel threw a party for thousands of people in, in Glasgow. He collapsed on stage after taking the drug. An ambulance was called. I had a tube down my throat. And this was all in front of a younger brother. who was in tears thinking I was going to die. Bloody hell, man. Imagine that. That's grim. I, I didn't know it was that. I, I knew he liked to have a good time. I knew he liked to get on it. But I didn't know it was that bad. I remember... This is what happened to um who's the guy from um one of Jamie Jones's friends? What's his name, man? He was he's like that, right? I think he got banned from coming from the UK. I think now he's he's back, but I remember I think he got deported for that, like just being too fucked up at night. So I remember hearing some people throwing parties and booking him for a party. I've got his name, man. And he kind of never turned up to the event. They walked up to his hotel and he was completely mung down in the bed and they just had to get somebody else to play for him. Um that can be really annoying. And I guess as well for the people around you too, man. Like you go from that's a problem. And that's why everyone's watched that Avicii documentary. The pressures of that's a pre I think that's just a pressure of being a high performing EDM act in, in Avicii, where you're you've got so many different um, forces that are kind of compelling you to sit in a studio and create and create. You're flying from place to place, playing in front of hundred thousand people, and it's a fairly lonely and insular kind of profession in that regard. Especially if you don't have you know your family and friends around with you who can maybe take time off work and just travel with you to in the middle of the week to las vegas it can be very isolating but i can imagine i don't i don't but again i don't know what the motivation would be for somebody at a jack master level to get that wasted at your party maybe it's just a, a way of dealing with the fame maybe it's just another internal struggle but that's just way too much isn't it like imagine yeah bloody hell i didn't know it was that bad um and again this idea of always stopping around a certain date is always a misnomer if you want to stop something diet you want to start working out you want to stop eating bad food you want to stop going out you want to not indulge in that indulge in this you just have to start today you can't make this future day of what the next morning i wake up and everything changes no it has to start today it doesn't have to start on a monday or a saturday it has to start today and it, it does and there's always and today's always the wrong time Oh, if I do it next week, I've got a wedding card. I've got, there's always, there's never going to be a perfect time to start anything or to make that kind of drastic a change. You have, to, you have to start whenever you say you're going to start and then kind of just hold on tight. It's going to be a rough ride and then kind of see yourself through the rocky waters. And as soon as you get on the other side, that's when you start realizing, oh, okay, this makes more sense. Um, it continued here. After his 30th, Ravel stopped taking drugs for a while but ended up relapsing. The night of the assault was supposed to be another last big night before getting clean again. His girlfriend at the time had given him an ultimatum. It was either her or the GHB. Was his girlfriend Peggy Goo at the time? Because I'm pretty sure they were together, right? And now she's with that photographer, dude. I'm not too sure. So he says in, in, he intended to finish up the last of his stash and be done with it. As it turned out, that night would be the last time he took GHB. As Ravel uh, explains all of this to me, he keeps re returning to the center facts. He repeats like a mantra. I chose to put the bottle of GHB to my lips. This is all my fault. Which again, only commended for that one. Ravel didn't face any legal consequences for his actions. Shortly after the festival, he arranged to meet with the victims and the festival to offer a face-to-face -face apology and discuss how to move forward. During that meeting, he offered to hand himself over to police, but the victim said that he didn't feel that was necessary. So credit to him and credit to the girls involved for like, you know, again, I'm, I'm sure... I would always I would always lean more towards the believing the victims and also believing them when they say they've forgiven the guy. If they say it's cool and it's fine, they've looked him in the ball of his eyes and seen that he's absolutely remorseful and maybe it was 
an out of character thing. Maybe previously he's gotten messed up, but he hasn't gone that far. He's gone on it and he's getting he's gotten wasted, but he hasn't gone that far. And this is the one occasion where he's kind of gone a bit too far, never slipped his mark. Credit to them. Uh, during that meeting, he offered themselves to police. They said they felt a public apology detailing the events as they happened was in order. Ravel agreed and gave a detailed statement to resident advisors in August 2018. In the May of this year, he posted another statement on his Facebook page in which he talked about how he had been significant changes to make the just destructive parts of his lifestyle by taking an extended period out, which is great. So far, time served has, be, has come in the form of self-imposed timeout or cancelled career, depending on how you look at it. Definitely cancelled. I think if you if you see the amount of time he's apologised, the amount of time he's trying to be remorseful, I think behind the scenes, he's definitely not been... I think he hasn't been... His agents and managers probably haven't been getting the calls that they wanted. Maybe he's got dropped by his agents and manager. You have no idea what's happening in the industry. People are really hot and cold on you once you're the hot guy hot girl they're going to jump on you and, and give you all the sets under the sun so, suddenly as soon as you get cold and the public cancels you they will completely ditch you straight away so i'm sure behind the scenes some clubs and some promoters have been hesitant to kind of book him but hopefully now it kind of changes in his favor and when i ask reveal how long is enough until you can have his career back he tells me he's finding it very difficult to move forward people keep telling me to move on from this but it's on my mind all the time which again is another um, indication that he's generally sorry about what he done as we talk about the mechanics of getting his career back together he darts back and forth between the practicalities of what a fresh start would look like a rider with no booze on it and the guilt he feels about contemplating a second chance but it's weird though isn't it you know the louis ck thing he never really apologized in a very heartfelt way he didn't seem like he was that apologetic which i understand because maybe in his eyes he might see it as a consensual um, act between two people or between some adults he I think it's, the story goes, he requested if he could masturbate in front of these women. They said yes. And then when it happened, they got freaked out by it, which, you know, you're allowed to give permission and then suddenly not be on it anymore. That's perfectly fine. But he probably feels in his head, I did nothing wrong. Everyone knows I've got this kink. I asked these girls if I could do it. They said yes. And now suddenly they're turning back on it and they're trying to make it seem as if I'm Harvey Weinstein. I get it in, in um, Lucy K's point of view. But the interesting fact about it, he was able to just get back on stage himself like he just did it like he went up on stage a couple of times and now he's putting on his own tour so i guess if you're jack master you could wait for the industry to give you permission to come back into the scene or you could just put your own money up and just throw a party and say look this is a i don't know a party that all the money raised goes towards this charity in order to kind of drug awareness i don't know where however you frame it right but you could do it that way and then see what the public says because ultimately i think enough time has elapsed where most people have either forgotten about this story or just don't care especially when the main victims of the story have forgiven him with the, the main two girls of the story the festival itself who are embarrassed and probably ashamed by his behavior have said you know what let bygones be bygones you're completely sorry about it you've taken a year out more than a year you've gone to therapy you've done some introspective work you've looked inside yourself you try to make some changes and if inevitably you have fallen and other people in your industry have also acted silently without acknowledging that they had an issue, without saying it out loud. I'm pretty sure a lot of people in this friendship group, I've seen it with my own eyes, have kind of settled down and chilled out from all the heady stuff they were doing. So he's essentially been a martyr in that respect for everybody else in the industry to see that, look, this is how far you can go. Don't take it this far. So I guess if he did for his own part, he would be perfectly fine, but probably doesn't want to do it. But I think a lot of it is more to do with him. I think he's struggling himself to kind of put himself out there and be in front of people because he doesn't want somebody, he doesn't want to be on stage and have some girl just stand there with two middle fingers up looking at him, staring in the eyes. You know what I mean, he probably feels, he, he probably doesn't, he's not enough of a scumbag to just go about life um, having people heckle him in the streets and be okay with it. It would hurt him, right? Especially since he's he's always been the kind of dude who was essentially the people's champ, I would say, in DJing wise. He's sim similar to like a scream. People are, ro are rooting for him to do well. Um, he's always kind of a jovial, fun dude, always willing to take pictures, sign things, just keep people the time of day. So to kind of go from that and suddenly be the villain is probably messing with his head a lot. Um, it continues here. Um, I've always, uh, da, 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 as we talk about the mechanics of getting his career back, da, 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 I've always wanted to stand against misogyny and I've always been vocal about it in the music industry. After after what's happened, I feel like I'm not able to stand for those causes because it's a hypocrite and people will just laugh at me out of the town, which is true, isn't it? When you're that, when you're that, when you're that forceful male feminist kind of dude and you suddenly get embroiled in this sort of stuff, it does seem a bit wild when you suddenly start, you know, you know. Um, but that, 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 that's part and parcel of the thing, isn't it? You're going to lose some things in this issue. Taking time off uh, reveals uh, space to pick through the layers of complicated feelings this situation brought up for him. Much of what has been 
he's been doing this year has involved introspection he's gone to therapy and aa and has done the hoffman project which is that self-help thing right an intensive personal development program whose alumni include goldie and gq editor dylan jones he tells me the substance abuse got worse as his career got bigger the more plaudits he collected the harder he f he found being the dj i've always just felt like i found myself at these big shows that i'm not really ready to feel which, you know, is true. It must be hard, isn't it? Going from being a really, a local legend to suddenly filling arenas and doing festivals is just nutty, isn't it? Um, I think the worst I saw him was a video with him and Peggy actually playing in, um, I think on Friday 909. That's the worst I saw him. I think, okay, this guy is completely wasted behind the decks. But somehow, again, the elite, the elites of the elites are just able to turn it in, isn't it? It was still a fairly decent set. Um, it's the best job in the world, being a DJ. I've always thought... That um, I've always uh, thought that to admit that was was I wasn't having the best of times or to ask for help was a big uh, was a bit get the violins out kind of thing. We also talk about his mother who died of alcohol related uh, complications when fourteen, which must be hell for him to kind of think about. He's kind of going down the same path. I've betrayed her memory and I feel like I've let her down. <sighs> Heavy shit, man. It's difficult to reveal to say, but he's doing all the work in part because he wants his job back. He loves music. It's been his outlet since childhood. At the same time, he only wants his career back if it's on the right terms with the victims. There's no handbook for this. But then again, they, they, that's, that's what I'm saying. I think he has to forgive himself now and just move on with it. He's given a lot. They're giving too much weight to the court of public opinion. If the victims themselves have forgiven you, they've moved on. It's up to now the industry, the people that actually can book you to decide whether or not to book you or not. And if they don't want to book you, it's up to him too to put some money up and throw his own event and do it that way and kind of work his way back in the industry that way. Because honestly, I'm pretty sure a lot of people would be willing and happy to have him back on the scene because as heinous as the crime was that he'd done, no one can deny that he's missed, man. He's definitely missing the musical landscape. I miss having him around. I miss hearing his tunes. I miss the amount of stuff he goes through. Like him and Scream are the same level of, you know, music nerdness. The stuff they go through in their sets week in, week out are just insane. I miss getting his tune ideas and it's just I mean his sets on YouTube and stuff. We miss him having him on a set, on a scene, man, honestly. We, we, it'd be good to have him back. Um, but he has to forgive himself, honestly, because again, the victims have forgiven him and he just has to kind of accept that and hope that the industry does if they don't put in your own event and go from there as the me too movement um moves into a new phase the article continues one one in which we have to live with what comes after the allegations men who've been accused haven't figured out a way to apologize properly and as a society we haven't figured out who to let back in and on which terms harvey weinstein um continues to deny the allegations against him some like louis ck and neil degrasse tyson who have apologized have been in criticized for doing it terribly um neil degrasse tyson did it quite well i think um, he completely took the time out, let the investigation continue. And for, for, for the most part, whilst the investigation was happening into his sexual assault charges, he completely stayed out of the public light. You know, mostly due to the advice of his agents and representation, I'm assuming, but, but mostly because it made more sense as soon as the allegations got denied. He went back onto the front foot and now he's everywhere, right? The first Nudugas Tyson appearance on JRE was a bit of a calamity. You could tell he was quite pent up and quite defensive, but... You know, for the most part, he did quite well. Lucy K, like I said previously, was a bit hit and miss. His apology, um, if anything, maybe Kevin Spacey one was the one that was a bit weird. But again, it's just there's no handbook or no playbook or steps for people to get reintegrated. So I think sometimes when you get accused of it, you don't know what where to go because there's not been a good example so far of people reintegrating themselves back into society when they made a mistake. Because again, it's cancel culture. The reason why these people say cancel culture is because effectively, I think like. Yeah, yeah, it comes from a good place. I think for the most part, women have suffered in this entertainment circles, you know, being the object of people's desire and abuse and all that sort of nonsense, right? So that now they're very sensitive to anything happening again to them in that regard. So if it happens again, they don't even want to give you a chance to redeem yourself because they think you are the rock. That's you're, you're basically rotten to the core. You can't redeem yourself. You can't. It's like you know, it's rotten plasterboard. You can't just take a bit of it out. You have to rip the whole thing down. So once they cancel you and put new plus board up, they're hoping those guys are going to be more well behaved. But there are some occasions where some people are have honestly made an honest mistake or just have overstepped the mark and done wrong. And in in the societies gone by, there was always a path for redemption. You'd always get chucked out of the village or shamed out of the village. But there was always a path for you to come back and earn people's trust again. And of course, there has to be a limit to it, but there has to be a route back to redemption. There has to be. Because, you know, none of us are perfect. We're all going to make mistakes. Not to the extent that he has done or other people have done, but we're going to make errors some way. We have to have a, a path back that allows us to kind of reintegrate back to society because if we're without our community, who are we? Do you know what I mean? If, for instance, somebody, God forbid, gets shamed or gets accused of sexual assault and they can't 
forgive themselves end up taking their life we have to all be responsible for that because we haven't given them the opportunity to redeem themselves in any way shape or form um the article continues here rather than let the court of opinion decide who's served enough time perhaps the best parameter we have is that the victims of abuse themselves feel Revell's victim declined to be interviewed specifically for this story and insisted issued a statement the position of the festival and its staff who were affected by Jack's behavior on the night is that Jack is directly apologized to them. He's taken time out of work for himself and undertaken to never repeat his behavior towards anyone else in the future. He has our staff and special support in working towards these aims and his own future happiness. Amazing. That's, that should be it, basically. Um, on the few occasions that Reveal has been to the club in last year, men have come up to him and told him that what he did wasn't too bad, something they've seen happening in the club every Friday night, which obviously isn't the best advice. It's really important for me not to go, thanks, man. Yeah, no, that's not what happened because it was it, it was that bad. It was, it was fucking out of order, he says. It's the kind of attitude that's stopping us from making progress. He says that in order for him to, the culture, in order, in order, he says that in order for the culture that normalizes his behavior to change, men need to stand up and admit wrongdoing. Every woman knows another woman who's been raped or sexually assaulted, which is also obvious. No, every man knows another man who's gone through honest and says that they've made the done that. The world's realized this past year. That occupying the higher echelons of the dance music industry means that taking responsibility as a role model, what he's found a lot harder, however, is accepting that his own fans might be part of the problem. Yeah, that is always the issue, isn't it? When your fans come, sometimes you can't. Help. Who said it recently? No name, right? She hates that all her fans are white. She makes music specifically for a particular black audience, but all her fans happen to be white college kids. Sometimes you can't. Sometimes you hate your own fans. Sometimes that's why I've heard comedians say they'll say a joke. And then they'll get a type of they'll get a certain person come up to them after the event that they don't want to be associated with, so they'll completely bin that joke. They just don't want to go down that route because it's going to attract a certain kind of audience. And I guess for Jack Massa, he's probably got a kind of laddie dude who kind of you know fumbles all the time and is excused for his behavior and you know is you know essentially pretty toxic in their masculinity. And he definitely isn't that guy. He just got way too fucked up and overset the mark on that one occasion or maybe several occasions. But he's not the dude that perpetually goes out every Friday night looks to get wasted so he can excuse himself to touch up people's bums and stuff. That's not what he wants to attract. So, man, oh man, that's that's the hard bit, isn't it? How do you get those fans the hell away from you? Um, the, the, there's definitely a big section of my fan base that would feel under the lad culture banner, he says. In her statement on RA last year, one of the victims said the response to, uh, to initial statement was sickening. She said the fact that they hijacked by untruths and, and lad humour is symbiotic uh, sy symptomatic sorry of the UK culture in a wider sense and highlights where it's so important for Jack to clarify what happened for a long time I've not been projecting positive messages Revo says if there's going to be any change it has to all start with for men men have to be prepared to check their matters check their mat their mates when they make even the mildest of misogynic comments which is true not your behavior anyway I think as a group of lads going out and like, oh, you have to check your friends and make sure they're not behaving in a bad way but in general you know sometimes mob behavior mob rule once one person is doing something you feel a bit out of order or out of, you feel a bit weird coming up and saying something you just partake or you be silent and that's not the way to go with things um i also think in general like i've said i honestly do think that since he got since he since this happened to, to jack master i feel like everyone else in the scene especially his kind of close circle of friends the, that kind of tech house crew for the lad for the loose for you know to roughly describe them has kind of got their affairs in order and probably pretty much you know settled themselves down for the most part it's the best thing to do because you know as much as people take the piss out of that tech house crew they do put on fun parties everyone seems to have a good time you know you're really waste you're really kind of um, risking it all for what a, a little group here and there with someone that doesn't want, want it to happen there are numerous amounts of groupies out there that are more than willing and happy to receive the sexual advances of people like jack Master. there's no need to kind of throw it under the bus just to kind of you know um, enact your power or influence or dominance of people that don't want it or you know people, especially people in the industry I feel I always feel like that's the way you overstep the mark when it's somebody when it's a peer or somebody in the industry that you're you're doing it and they're kind of hustling the same way it's a female it's a fellow female DJ there should be a kind of brotherhood between you where there's not that line is always kind of drawn in the sand where they can always feel comfortable around you and they know that when they see you on the stage or when they see you on the lineup they know they've got like a kind of um, uh, a brother in arms that they can kind of uh, rely on if things get a bit hairy um, and again, there's always a, there's there's a plethora every industry, whether it's flipping, you know, authors to poets to 
you know, hockey players, everyone has groupies who are more than willing and happy to, you know, um, exchange sexual favors in order to kind of get behind the booth. There's no need to kind of, you know, do it to people that don't want it in that regard. Um, the, 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 for a long time, I've, I've been putting a message. Um, if you've been, yeah. So, yeah, it's a really long article or no, pretty short article. Check it out if you're that way inclined. Uh, it's called Jack Master Saw My Thought. Jack Master Breaks His Silence on, on Vice Magazine. I'll link it in the show notes for you guys to check out if you want to check out yourself as well. But definitely recommend check it out. And again, support Jack Master, man. Send him words to kind of I think he's, I think he's okay. I think he's fine. I forgive him. I think he's, the victim has forgiven him, which is the main thing. And now he can move on with his career and go from there. I would say, in my opinion. But again, what do I know, innit? What do I know? 